Hello everyone. There is a story about a boy playing hide and seek with his friends. When it was his turn to hide, he did so eagerly. But for some reason his friends stopped playing while he was still hiding. The boy became very upset with his friends and ran to his grandfather who was in the house. With tears in his eyes, he said, Grandpa, I was hiding behind a tree and waited for hours, but my friends did not come to find me. The grandfather took the little boy in his arms and said, Oh, my child, do not weep because the boys did not come to find you. Perhaps you can learn a lesson from your disappointment. All our life, we are playing a game of hide and seek with God. God is waiting to be found, but we go in search of other things, and we have no desire to look for Him. Friends, the Old Testament often speaks of seeking and finding God. The Israelites were told many times to seek the Lord. For instance, Moses told the people who had forsaken God that if they sincerely start looking for Him once again, they will find Him. Solomon was encouraged by his father, King David, to seek God with all his heart and find Him. So also Isaiah called out to Israel to seek the Lord. Let us briefly look at the circumstances under which Isaiah began preaching. The prophet lived in a very turbulent and unstable time. By Isaiah's time, the nation of Israel had been divided into two kingdoms, the northern kingdom Israel with the ten tribes and the southern kingdom Judah with two tribes. His ministry was in Judah, although he spoke of events in both kingdoms. Assyria had attacked both Israel and Judah and conquered them. The Israelites were being forsaken by God because they had taken up false worship and turned away from God. Some were completely ignorant of the righteousness of God and others were indifferent to seeking and finding God. However, they still performed the religious ceremonies and asked why God allowed these things to happen to the chosen people of God. In the context of utter despair and the hopeless condition, Isaiah delivered a message of condemnation for their sins, along with a message of hope for a day of restoration and words of comfort so that they would not lose heart. Their restoration and redemption would take place through the Lord's servant, the Messiah. Isaiah said, Seek the Lord while he may be found Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous in forgiving. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Implies that God had not abandoned his people, but allowed himself to be found if they sought him and to be near if they called him. So they were called upon once again, but in a tone of reproach, to seek the Lord with contrite hearts and accept God's gracious offer of mercy, forgiveness, reconciliation, as well as peace and happiness without delay. Otherwise the opportunity would pass and God would withdraw himself from them. Friends, the reading is a gentle reminder for us to seek the Lord before everything else. Some might ask why God hides himself in the first place and then wants us to look for him. Why doesn't he just make himself visible to all people? As a matter of fact, God seeks us always and allows himself to be found. It is like an adult playing hide and seek with a child. When it's our turn to hide, we might hide ourselves in a place where we can easily be found by the seeker. We want that seeker to feel like he or she has found us, but in reality, we make ourselves easy to be found. 
That's what God does. He lets himself to be found. St. Paul says in the Acts of the Apostles that God has not only created the whole human race to occupy the entire earth, but also decreed the times and limits of their habitation and wants them to seek the Lord by feeling their way towards him and succeed in finding him as he is not far from us. So, it is not so much that God hides himself from us, but rather we are blind that we cannot see him. It is our own sin and unbelief that hide the Lord from our sight and prevent us from finding him. If we are seriously seeking God, then we have to seriously turn away from our sins. We cannot find God if we are still in sin. When we call out to God for any favor, He will often awaken our conscience to something in our life that needs to be forsaken. It is important, therefore, to forsake wicked ways and righteous thoughts to obtain God's favor. As long as we look to man's ways or plans, the outcome is not just improbable, but impossible. It is impossible to do God's thing in man's way and get God's result. That's why the Lord says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways high above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. Today, let us all pray that God may touch our hearts and give us the desire to seek and find Him. Amen. God bless you.